Leonardo da Vinci and the Shroud of Turin. Was there a deal with the church? I'm Scott Walter, forensic geologist and a Knights Templar. And I'm Timothy Hogan, Grand Master of the Knights Templar. And this is Mysteries of the Knights Templar. Leonardo da Vinci created a miracle for the Vatican in exchange for the Vatican leaving the underground Templar tradition alone. A deal with the church involving the Shroud of Turin? Well, this is very interesting because the Shroud of Turin is one of the most well-known religious artifacts in the world. And of course it has an image of a male that's burned into the cloth. And many people believe that it represents the cloth that was covering Jesus, and then when he ascended, the image was then burned into the cloth. Well, at least according to the order's records, what really happened here is the order had acquired a shroud from the Gnostic sect of the Druze in the Middle East to the Templars had close associations with. This shroud actually did not have any image on it at all at the time, but it was just something that had existed within the records uh, and within the archives. Leonardo da Vinci was friends with Pope Leo X, and he struck a deal with them and he said, look, I will produce a miracle for the church if you agree to leave the underground Templar bodies alone to just do the stuff we need to do. And Leo X was open to this idea. So what he did was he gave Leonardo room within the basement of the Vatican, which there was a morgue. Why would they need to cut a deal with the Templar order? It was a win-win situation. If right. By striking this deal, it allowed the church to have a miracle, which could help with the faithful of the church to give them a renewed faith, if you will, and it would help the underground Templar movement to do its work. Right. Leonardo da Vinci was already experimenting around with camera obscuras. What he found is that with the camera obscura, he could create an inverted image. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, you could do this with a pinhole camera now. But at the time, Leonardo needed something a little bit more advanced. So he hired German lens makers to specifically make special lenses that could be fitted for this camera obscura. His plan was to take emulsion and put it on the shroud that had been obtained from the Druze to the Templars, take an emulsion to put on this shroud using chemicals that was produced alchemically in Leonardo's lab, specifically to burn an image from the camera obscura onto the cloth itself. So wait a minute, it's not Jesus then? It's not Jesus, this was actually the first photograph in modern history. Yeah. But the reason why they had to do it in the morgue specifically was because they needed a body that wasn't going to move for a long period oh, of time. Right, because of the exposure time. To exposure time in uh -huh. order to burn the image in. What Leonardo did was he actually folded over the area which would be the head and he just burned a body into there. Now, when the German lens makers saw this, they started to get a sense for what was going on down there. They didn't understand it. They just saw these weird images. They thought Leonardo was doing necromancy oh. and they accused him of that. You know, they said, look, you're doing alchemy and necromancy and we don't want to create lenses for you if you're going to do this. Oh, I see. But, you know, eventually, Leonardo was able to get the image created through the lenses he had. Now, historians know about this episode in history in which he was working with German lens makers while he was working on a secret project for the Vatican. Oh, they just they don't didn't know, know what, what it was. The project was. It's exactly right. But it, what it was was to create this shroud. Mm -hmm. And for the final capstone, if you will, of this shroud, Leonardo used his own face for the face of Jesus. So it's it's not Jesus, it's not De Molay, it's actually It's Leonardo Vinci. himself. It's yeah. Leonardo himself. Yeah, and, and you can see this, even if you look at the shroud to this day, you can see that the head is separated There's ever a line. so slightly. I've actually seen photographs of it in one of the churches in Europe, 
and there is a line. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it not only was that line from the cloth being folded over, right? Because they had to put this head on separate from the body. Right. Like a Frankenstein monster. So there was a, a, a demarcation, but, right? But he left the demarcation because of his veneration of St. John the Baptist. Who was beheaded. Beheaded, right. And this is why even to this day, if you look at the shroud, if you look at the face of the shroud, you can see there's a slight fisheye effect that comes from the lens. Oh, right. Uh, right. It also explains some of the lighting that would happen from the lenses. Mm -hmm. And scientists, modern scientists have figured out that the shroud was created through some sort of light emanation, but they don't know how or why. Well, this is why. It's because it was the first photograph in modern history. Well, you know what? That makes perfect sense because if, if this was the shroud of somebody who was dead, or even if they were dead and then rose from the dead, there would be some type of organic material that was left in the cloth, and that can be dated, right? That's right. Well, and in fact, the only organic material that they have found on the shroud is from Drew's DNA that's dated from the 1300s, so the 1200s and the 1300s, uh, yeah. which puts it right in the time frame of when the Templars were associating with the Druze, mm -hmm. where they attained the cloth from the Druze. So this is a form of alchemy using light, right? right? How specifically did he do it? Do we know? Yeah, he used silver salts, not unlike how early photography is burnt into images later on, but it was just happened to be done on a cloth instead of on a piece of paper. Right. And all the ingredients that was needed to do this are found in Leonardo's notebooks. I mean, he, he detailed it all, including the camera obscura. So it's all there. It's just people haven't pieced it together. And it was very important to the Templar order at the time and to Leonardo that the family to reveal the shroud to the public would be the de Charnay family. Who was? Geoffrey de Charnay, the former Norman preceptor, was who was burnt at the stake with Jacques de Molay. And, you know, there's a bad stigma oh, associated course. that had this family member burnt at the stake. Well, so. especially when you have the church telling the whole world that your family member was a heretic, that's why we burned him at the stake. Right. Now, they're, they're not in a position to tell people the truth, and right. people wouldn't have believed it anyway because in many ways they either were totally dedicated to the church or who are you gonna believe? I right. gotta believe the church, I'm not gonna believe you. Why would they burn you, you know? Right. I mean, that was a tough one. So this was a way to, to help the de Charnay family save face. Right. Rome, Pope Leo X certainly went along with it. So the de Charnay family is the one that was allowed to reveal the shroud to the public and it's been deemed a miracle ever since. Mm. So by giving this shroud to the de Charnay family after Leonardo was finished working on it and then having the de Charnay family in turn give it to the church, it helped clear the de Charnay family's name of having been associated with this heresy. And it was of benefit to the church because now the church had a miracle. Well, in addition to that, the win for the tradition was Leonardo basically said, back off the scientists. Yeah. Uh, people like Galileo, let them do their work and you can have your miracle and everybody will play nice from here on. That's right. And you have to remember Leonardo had been schooled with a number of other Renaissance thinkers and alchemists right. and painters, people like Botticelli, right. for example, and Raphael. They had all been schooled in the same school who were committed to not only understanding the symbolism and the mythologies in the texts that were being brought back by the Templars, but then incorporating it into artwork of the Renaissance. Speaking of artworks and Leonardo da Vinci and secrets, there's actually a secret that is embedded in another piece of his artwork that is absolutely fascinating. And what am I talking about? Well, you're talking about the Virgin of the Rocks. That's right, that's right. And what a lot of people don't understand is da Vinci was actually asked by the church to create a piece of art that would become Virgin on the Rocks. And when you look at that image, you see Mary standing in blue in front of 
two children, which are supposed to be Jesus and John the, John Baptist, the Baptist as children. Correct. The only problem with this artwork is there's another person in the picture on the right hand side dressed in green and orange, which happened to be the symbolic colors of Mary Magdalene. Orange representing the region in France that legend says she disappeared into after the crucifixion, and green representing her Celtic roots and, and ideology. So you've got this woman with auburn hair sitting on the right, and the problem with this is they were all contemporaries in age. So if that's Mary Magdalene, those two children cannot be Jesus and John the Baptist, which begs the question, if that's not who they are, then who are they? Yeah, and at least according to the Templar tradition, these were the children of John the Baptist and Jesus that they both had with Mary Magdalene. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you realize what you just said? Yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, according to the tradition, John the Baptist and Jesus were both married to Mary Magdalene and had children with her. Initially, Mary Magdalene was married to John the Baptist. They had children. John the Baptist was meant to be the leader of this new tradition. He was certainly the initiator of Jesus. And when he was killed early, Jesus had to take on that new role. And Mary Magdalene then married Jesus and had children through Jesus. So this painting seems to be suggesting the children from both people and Mary Magdalene. 